In today's video, we're going to be cooking the Sweaty Palms Burger from Season 2, Episode 8 of Bob's Burgers, titled Bad Tina. Since you're such a good writer, how about texting Zeke and Jimmy Jr. and inviting them over? I'm not allowed to have boys over. Ugh, come on, Tina. Oh, I hope you got a jar to pee in, Gene. We're gonna be in here a long time. I've got Tina's rain boot. Okay, I'll take the other one. So you heard the narrator. Today we're making the Sweaty Palms Burger from the burger book that you know and love. This burger is made from some ingredients that I have never even heard of in my entire life, and frankly, they're kind of expensive that I bought just for this video, because that's how much I love you guys. And I'm sticking to the recipe. The ingredients include Kalamata olives, hearts of palm, a can of artichoke hearts, some delicious looking green pitted olives, balsamic vinegar, and things will get cheesy with some fresh parmesan. We're rocking that 80-20 Angus ground beef. Moving right along, we have some more veggies, starting with the serrano pepper, then some fresh basil, and a couple cloves of garlic. I'm gonna kick things off by grating this Parmesan cheese, and then I'm gonna add the rest of these ingredients to a food processor or a blender and let it do its magic. I'm really excited to see how this one turns out because it's gonna be a little bit interesting with all these different ingredients I've never seen before. Let's send it. The Parmesan falls like snow as Christmas nears. The world is still and my mind grows calm. This Parmesan cheese is everything and nothing at the same time. I am a mere puppet to it. It's also exhausting. I need to hit the gym. To make things a little bit easier on my blender, I'm going to chop up and mince up some of these vegetables because my blender is a uh, sorry sack of shit, so. We continue on by removing the skin from the garlic and mincing up the cloves like one does. After we are done with each ingredient, we will add it to our blender. Next, we're going to slice up our pepper. So professional, so sensual. And then we're going to cut up our basil into thin ribbons. We're getting kind of deep into this recipe book and it just made me think, it makes me think about people like Bob Belcher who dedicate their entire lives to cooking one thing, which is burgers. And he just finds creative ways to make them, right? He finds all these different burgers of the day with tons of different ingredients. He combines different cuisines from across the world with his burgers and it's awesome. It's just that level of creativity in such a confined space is so cool. I wonder what my favorite thing to cook will be one day. What about you? What gets you up in the morning to cook? What excites you? And it doesn't have to just be cooking. What injects the juices into your soul and just gets you passionate about life. All right, back to that blender. Now it's time to whip out the old trusty blender and get this toppinade mixed up. I ended up blending it a little too finely in my opinion, but like I said earlier, my blender is just not good. You want it to be smooth, but maybe a little bit more chunky. I will admit the mixture was looking pretty sus, but as a child of divorce, I've seen worse. The next step is to create our patty, season it, and throw it on the pan, so let's do it. Form your patty ball, season it with salt and pepper, and then roll it around on your cutting board. Make sure to coat it evenly as this is crucial for the patty to achieve the highest level possible. Transfer the patty to a hot scolding pan and let the magic unfold. While the patty continues to cook, you can get your potato buns or your buns of choice out so they're prepared and ready to be toasted. The time has finally arrived to add your cheese and cover to melt. Add your buns into the pan you cooked your burger in and toast them up and allow them to absorb some additional flavor. 
With every step completed, we can now start to build our burger, starting with the bottom bun, followed by our juicy cheese patty. Then a good helping of our tapenade mixture we created. I drizzled it with a little bit of olive oil, and then I gave it a good sprinkle of dried basil, and then a little bit of dried parsley. And finally, the top bun. So here's the deal guys, it smells pretty good. However, I have heard that this is potentially one of the worst burgers in the book. With that said, I'm a little bit hesitant. Drum roll. Let's go for it. It's a very salty burger, but I'll be honest, I think it actually came out pretty well. I did go against the recipe a little bit. I added a little bit more olive oil, balance out the tanginess and like the saltiness from like the mixture. But I honestly think this burger is actually pretty decent. And I'm a, I'm a little bit scared to say that. I don't know how many people would actually like this kind of burger. I might just have a weird palate. This burger probably comes in around a 7.75 out of 10, which is surprisingly pretty high. Another burger taken down, defeated. And I wanted to take a second at the end of this video to just say thank you guys for coming back and watching this series so far. Channel is starting to take off and grow way faster than I ever anticipated and it's very exciting. I love the comments you guys have been leaving. It really means a lot to me. And so I can't wait to get into next week's burger and I'll see you then. Peace!